Good morning, everyone. Welcome to a beautiful brand new day. And welcome to Dear Ms. T with our very favorite psychotherapist, Terry Ruel. Good morning, Terry. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. And Happy New Year. Um, I know we're kind of in a challenging time again, and uh, maybe I should say a uh, challenging new year, but that doesn't mean that we can't cope with it. And um, that's what I kind of thought if we talked about the gifts of the inner child today, it might help us remember that we have maybe more coping skills than we realize to, you know, cope with the many challenges that we're facing today. Um, Of course, COVID is resurging everywhere. So that's a a challenge again. And sometimes we feel just wore out from having to cope. But if we can get these refreshers that, you know, kind of help us to boost our resilience back up. And um, so I think um, the the wisdom of the inner child or the gifts of the inner child hold great, you know, comfort as well as help for us. So maybe we just start with kind of defining um, our inner child. Um, You know, we all have within us the adult, the parent, and the child. The the adult who we are now, the parent voices that we grew up with, and the child that um, we were. So we always have our child with us, and unless we've really taken time to get in touch with him or her, we might not really know what gifts she carries for us. You know, as a child, um, children are just a bundle of feelings. That's where all our feelings are born. What we come into the world with is um, a bundle of feelings. And it's where those feelings either help um, us to stay uh, strong and healthy because they are validated and acknowledged and honored and help to be expressed or they get wounded and they help they make it more difficult for us to not carry those wounds into our adulthood so those wounds though are also can be as we heal them become the gems or the gifts that can help us in our adult life. So inner child work has been around probably forever in different kinds of names and ways, but I think it became more known and popular maybe in the seventies when John Bradshaw and, Melody Beattie, uh, Claudia Black, a lot of the pioneers who actually started working with um, addictions and discovered that the core source of so much of it was the wounded inner child and how to help that us get in touch with our wounded child and help him or her heal. So that's kind of where I started with their um, teachings and their books and um, went to a lot of intensive work with them. And it really is a lot of grief work, too, when you go back and start doing inner child work. So it's all about feelings. Um, And feelings really are, you know, present before our thoughts. They're what really drives everything, whether we're aware of them or not. So how we cope with our feelings and be able to identify them and recognize what's happening in our feeling emotional self is what's going to determine how well we can cope and how we can heal any wounds that we have. And so the... The wonder child is often expressed with the inner child because when we come into the world, like you say, with all these feelings and 
the primary ones are curiosity and awe. And those are the, the ones that if we can keep those or go back to them and heal them and bring them out again, are probably the most important ones to help us to ever cope with life because life is hard. And being able to have a curiosity about it and other people all the time is tremendously helpful because it keeps us out of judgment. It keeps us out of um, the conflicts in internally within ourselves and within our head, the thought conflicts, um, because there doesn't have to be an either or a right or wrong. It can be both and. It's just always looking at the world and what's happening with us um, or other people with curiosity, approaching everything with curiosity. And you probably started to hear this more and more because it has been um, coming out in more and more of the literature again. And also looking at everything with awe and curiosity is what helps us look at things with awe um, because when we really step back and we're really curious you know we can only have awe and wonder about this world this mystery that we are all a part of that we can't really totally know probably in our human form but that is miraculous so you know when we when we can find our awe again the sacredness of life that can be you know probably the two most vital human feelings that the inner child always holds and has for us that we need the most because that's what they come into the world with and even no matter how wounded we are in our childhood, you cannot put those sparks out. They can be, you know, very covered up, but they are, I believe, the divine connection. You know, when children come into the world, they are the closest to creator or source. And that, maybe can think of it as the awe and curiosity is, you know, part of the divinity, the cord of connection that they have with source. So that can not, nothing can take that away, but it can get masked, you know, from wounding. But if we do our inner child work and we do the healing, we can find that again. And like I say, ultimately, awe and curiosity are the greatest gifts that we bring into this world with us and the child holds those and that's what helps us to see the sacredness of everything and if we see that and know that of course we're going to care for ourselves and our in each other and our home and everything else much better so that that you know innocence and purity that children hold comes from that connection to source that they're so a uh, part of and it helps them to stay in that that uh, place of awe and curiosity you know if you just watch little children and you, everyone was like this, everyone. They have a wonder about everything. They are curious about everything. Everything is brand new and, and they're awestruck. And they want to find out every little thing and learn about it. And yeah, they get frustrated when they can't understand it because they're so curious. And so they are probably one of the ways that we can help ourselves heal 
too with our inner child is to just um, be around little ones again too if we're not and just be able to observe them and let yourself open up to that and your child will come forward um, one of the ways um, that we talk about sometimes to to be able to understand what happens to a child who grows up with wounding especially uh you know if there's a uh dysfunctional family system and you have siblings uh usually each child will take on a role in the family to try to cope and we've talked about you know there's the hero kid and often that's the oldest and they are the ones that um, are the, usually the overachievers and try to give the family some sense of self-esteem by achieving. And then there's the scapegoat, the one who usually carries all the anger that's not being expressed in the family and becomes the rebel and the acting out kid and the mascot who is the class clown, the one who tries to relieve the tension in the family by being funny, making everybody laugh. And there's often the lost child. And this is the one who just tries to relieve the pain by staying invisible. They stay in their room a lot, read, just kind of try to stay out of sight. Don't make waves. So you could see as if this is how a child learns to cope with their pain and they take that into their adulthood and don't heal that, that can become a, um, instead of a gift, it becomes, a, you know, a curse that might, people might say, you know, we become codependent or we become just constantly in trouble and, you know, uh, fighting everything or we don't grow up we become we stay the class clown or we become like you say so invisible that we don't participate in life so how can those those uh painful wounds that we carry that cause us to go into these kind of roles be healed and then turn into gifts well it's not easy <laughs> it takes some hard work and of course depending on how much wounding you've had in your um, childhood and how severe is going to determine you know how long it might take you through some therapy that can be pretty hard because you you know we go back and we have to find those um feelings again and bring them forward and give them their moment to be acknowledged and validated and honored and expressed so they can release. But once that happens, what could be the gifts behind that? Well, um, besides finding your curiosity and your awe again, which that in itself will help you release a lot of if you want to call it codependency because when you're like say curious about other people and not judging you don't judge yourself either and you become able to let live and let live as they say and concentrate on just being true to yourself so, of course, the, that's going to be the most important things we want to find again is that wonder child, that curiosity and that awe. But maybe you were a hero kid and you were, you know, the overachiever and you're very driven and it's very hard for you to feel good about yourself without um, achieving um, in the world and feeling like you're it's what you're doing that matters instead of your being well that when you start to heal your inner child what 
um, the gifts that come with that, of course, one of them is resourcefulness. You become, you can turn that drive into being able to be really resourceful for how you take care of yourself in this world with these challenges right now, especially. So you can, instead of it being a driven to achieve externally, it becomes a resourcefulness that you have as a gift that helps you to cope with whatever comes at you. You just really figure it out how to, you know, take care of yourself and you find the resources that you need. And that can include therapy. You know, oftentimes heroes come into therapy because they have already started to work on their self-care and their healing and they realize they are very resourceful and they can ask for help and get help and they can um, take care of themselves in a good way. And of course, one of the gifts of the scapegoat that comes out of their um, rebelliousness and their ability to carry the anger and the pain and then work through it, of especially so much of the whole family, is that they have a resilience that they can fall back on that gets them through so much. Often the scapegoats, you know, have high addiction rates and, um, you know, because of their unhealed anger that they're carrying of the whole family and they act out a lot so they have a lot of messes to clean up but on in their recovery they have a resilience that they're the ones often in the family that heal first and stick with it and then are able to actually become mentors and uh, helpers for others So there's gifts in every role. And, of course, the mascot, when they can heal their inner child, they mature and they are able to use their humor as a coping mechanism, but in a healthy, mature way to where they're not making light of their pain or anyone else's pain or the problems in the world but being able to find a balance with, I don't have to be depressed all the time about this. I can find a balance with, yes, there's both, you know, challenges and difficulty and hardships, and but there's also always beauty and humor. And they are wonderful people to help us remember our sense of humor. And then there's the lost child. And, of course, you know, when she's um, unable to feel like she's worthy of even participating in the world, we don't even get to know her or him. But once she starts to heal, the gifts that she brings out um, are tremendously helpful to everybody because she has an ability to adapt or and know what is healthy to adapt to and what isn't. So he can be a very um, wise guide with this. Um, and, you know, these are, like I say, people who have gone in and done their inner child work. And they also can be very creative in helping themselves and other people find ways to adapt and work with challenges. So, you know, all of these are tremendously helpful ways for us to cope right now. Um, Jerry? Sure. We have a question from one of your listeners. Uh Uh, Patricia. Good morning, Patricia. It's great to have you as a first-time listener. And in the chat room, Uh, Patricia would like to know, Terry, uh, do you have a book on this topic or one that you would recommend? Um, Well, it depends on if you 
wanted one to start with for healing your inner child first. Um, I would recommend uh, any of John Bradshaw's books on healing your inner child. Um, the Shame That Binds You is a really good one. I think he has one that is actually called Healing Your Inner Child. Um, oh, Sharon Wegscheider Cruz's. Um, oh, shoot. I'm going to have to look them up and, and list them on your page. Uh, it's not coming to me right now. You know, like you say, I I kind of know the older ones um, because they were kind of the ones I was raised with in my education, too, as well as my healing. Um, but they're still around, and they're, like I say, the pioneers, and I think they're still some of the best. Um if you're looking for something more on the gifts of the inner child, I think there is one called that. I can't think of the author, but I will um, list, make a list for your page, uh, for Denise's page for you. Um, on the uh, Temple Within Radio group? Yes. On Facebook? That, would that be the best way to go? Yep, and also on your page on Facebook. Okay. Uh, Dear Miss okay. T., um, and there's another question from Susan in the chat room with regard to what you're talking about. Um, she's asking, can you have a bit of several inner child tendencies, like a lost child and a little of a comic too? Yes, definitely. That's a great question, especially an only child will often have all the roles um, carry the burden of all of them. Um, but yes, and, and oftentimes... You know, people will have some of each of but there will be usually a, um, you know, a dominant one. If if you had siblings, like you say, if it's only child, you're going to have some of all of it. If there's two kids, you probably are going to have, you know, a couple stronger ones of each. So, you know, it's not carved in stone, but it's a good guide to kind of be able to when stuff is coming up be able to you know search through it yourself to, and you you know the inner child healing work where you talk to your inner child one of the books I always recommend is um, where you ask your child questions with your dominant hand and you answer with your non-dominant hand um, you can even use a crayon. It really will get you in touch with what's still there from your childhood and talking with your inner child, what she needs to talk about, what her, his or her wounds are. Um, I'm not thinking of the name of it. I'll get it, though. Um, so there's a lot of tools out there that can really help you narrow down your own personal journey Um even more so. Well, I know that one of the best uh, tools that I ever received from you was with the class that you taught at the School of Sacred Studies on working with the inner child. And the, the movement that you took us through, or the meditation you took us through to meet our inner child and to reassure our inner child that, you know, we, we have their back now, in other words, or... Um, we understand there, there was so much that went into the conversation that I had no idea before I did the exercise with everyone in the group, how much our inner child has to say. Right, right. And at, at every age, I mean, we have a child who's, you know, three, four, five, we have one, eight, nine, ten, and then our adolescent child, and they all have gifts for us. It was great work. For me, it was life-changing um, to have those conversations at the, the different stages of who I am and who I was. It, was. it was profound work, the inner child work. So thank you for facilitating that, Terry. Oh, you're so welcome. And, you know, I'm always happy to do any kind of inner child work. I, I really believe it's the most important work we ever do because I think... Like say, if the feelings really are at the core of everything, and if they're 
suppressed and subconscious, they're driving things people are doing and and thinking and not e- they're not even aware of it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's what causes to me most of the problems in the world. You know, if we can heal our wounds, like say we get back in touch with our divinity, our, our, our curiosity, our, the sacredness of life and each other and where we live and that becomes the most important thing is how we treat ourselves and each other Mm -hmm. and the planet. So, you know, I don't know what could be more important in helping heal the problems that we're facing. Mm -hmm. And People can stay in their adult then, and they're not being controlled by their parents' voices or unhealthy things that they got from culture or, um, you know, we can call those parent voices too, any authority voices that weren't healthy and they're not being controlled by the wounds of their child that, you know, like I say, can be the hero or the, the scapegoat or the mascot or the lost child. They, once we heal those things, they become gifts that help us cope with life and, and find much greater joy too in happiness. So it's it's really worth the work as hard and painful as it can be sometimes in the beginning, because, you know, we don't want to go back and have to feel those feelings, but that's the only way they are able to heal and release because they got suppressed when we were children. Mm-hmm. So, and that energy needs to be released too because if we don't it takes a toll on our bodies physically so it's it's where it's really worth it and everybody deserves to heal terry if there's anyone that would like to reach out to you to do some therapy work around the inner child work what is the best way for them to reach out to you um through my phone number probably um Two three one two five zero four three three five, and I'll post that too, or my email um, pathwaysbr at hotmail, and I can post those too for people along with all the books. And um, if anybody has uh, suggest some books that have helped them, I'm happy to put them on too. Uh, if you want to email them to me, I'll make sure and post them. And I know that you wanted to ask your listeners as we're wrapping up for today, if they have any um, suggestions or what they might like you to talk about on your monthly podcast, you'd like to hear from them. Um, Would it be best for them to email you at pathwaysbr at hotmail.com with suggestions or how do you, how would you like that to happen? Yes, that'd probably be the best way. Then I won't forget because I'll have it in in print. (laughs) Perfect. I like to keep write everything down now. I think we all have brain fog from this <laughs> long COVID thing or something. <laughs> exactly. So, yes. Y- I would like to be able to do what, you know, interests people. And, um, you know, I'm happy to try to accommodate that if I can. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining Terry this morning. A great conversation, Terry. And I hope we can do some more around this inner work. And uh, maybe on a future show, you can lead us on a a guided meditation to meet our inner child. I'd be happy to. Thank you, Dana. And if um, there isn't anything next time for sure that we can always try to stick that in there at least. (laughs) That would be wonderful. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Have a good one, everybody. Have a great day, everyone.